Greetings fellow wargamers and painting nerds. Uh, this is Vaughn Shipongu. Uh, I got a bit of an update here. I know it's been a couple weeks since I put something up. So uh, it's been a, it's out in the yard for quite a bit today. As you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm rejuvenating myself here with a nice beer. Um, but yeah, this is what I've done. I'll get right into it. Um, I'll start with the bolt action stuff. I've got some terrain that I've also got done and uh, some Napoleonics. So uh, first up, I have finished Joachim Piper, this guy here, and you remember last time I did this guy, um, but we did Joachim Piper, I'm going to bring him up a, maybe a bit more forward here, try to get a bit of a shot of him here, uh, basic, it's the basic figure, I want to use him for my Fall of Berlin army, so I cheesily or gamily gave him an, uh, an STG-44, so I could say, oh he has a, an assault rifle, gave him some gas cans, um, and uh, he's going to be paired off with this guy. It's like they've, they're, they're out looking for gas. This here is the, another Citroen um, that I did. Um, this time it's a French civilian version. Um, I'm sending this off to to Germany. Um, this is going to go with the Oberst Schaefer figure. Um, this is also uh, part of uh, uh, what I'm, I'm sending to my mate there. Um, yeah, it's 148th to me. Uh, um, you know, it's super easy to put together uh, I kind of miffed it a little bit don't tell him if you see him on the uh, glass there it looks like there's been some kind of a fist fight inside the car but otherwise it looks okay it's just for his uh, it's for his um, resistance army so I thought it'd be kind of cool that he could have a little car that his flamethrower team or something could pop out of and you know lay down some hurt on Jerry um, I did some winter Germans uh, here they are do 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 um, I did that Hanomag that I mentioned that I had last time. Um, one small thing here, I put I've put the uh, the MMGs on pins, so when I transport them, they can pop in and out uh, relatively easy. Um, I did the command. Um, I noticed that this guy uh, is SS. His hat is SS. The the uh, captain he's SS. So, but I'm going to entirely the army is going to be in my case going to be a Wehrmacht army this time around. But yeah, he was a lot of fun to do. They always are. I know I say that. I haven't said fantastic yet. I guess I blew it there. <laughs> um, him, his buddy, of course. They both got uh, some machine guns. I'll show you the back here real quick. Um, I, As you can notice, or as you have noticed maybe, there is nothing on the bases yet. Um, so I will probably be doing um, the bases a bit later. And I will show you what I plan to do there. Um, this is... The figures uh, that came with the new rulebook version 2. Um, I don't know if I'm going to use this guy or if I'm just going to have this guy sort of sitting on the shelf. I really like doing him. He was a lot of fun, of course, as they all are. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, it, it was it was uh, a neat one to do. I like the the, the, uh, the detail on the inside of the helmets. So let's take a little bit of a closer look maybe with the Hannah Mag. Let me just move these guys out of the way. So the Hanomag was the uh, Stukafus version from uh, Tamiya. Um, I don't know what's going on with the focus here. I'm getting a blinking message. <laughs> I'm such a Luddite. I apologize. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, relatively easy to do. Um, I Basically, I airbrushed it in black, primed it black, did the dark yellow, did the camo, went over it with sort of a bluey gray wash, and then stippled or stapled. Um, Oh god, it's that beer talking. Stippled, stipled, used white paint in a crappy old brush, and uh, and it's it's it turned out pretty good. It got a bit of a rust effect. Did a bit of weathering on it, but not not too much. I mean, it's it's just a mobile machine gun nest to carry my guys. But I got one more thing, uh, terrain wise, that I want to show you for bolt action. I'm gonna maybe explain about those bases too. <laughs> Okay, as you know, um, or maybe you remember, I mentioned in a previous video that we're hoping to do, we're planning to do a, a, a tournament in October, October 1st on a Sunday, and uh, we're trying to make a lot of terrain, um, so um, we decided, my, my mate and I were like, hey, you know, I got this model kicking around, I got some stuff kicking around, you know, as a, you know, 
why don't we make like the UFO, you know, launch pad base kind of thing, you know, we'll put it in Antarctica or something like that. So anyways, this is what I came up with. Um, I did this kind of on the cheap. The model of the UFO is by from a company that I don't remember, but it's 172nd scale. Um, I did the interior because I am a total nerd. <laughs> so I, I did them up, you know, we got Von Kirk, Speck, and Scotty, you know, inside there. Um, we've got some helmets and an MP40 on the wall and a gas mask and stuff like that. Um, it was a pretty cool model. I did this a while ago, so it's not like I just cranked this out. I've, I've had this model on my in my case for quite a bit. But it's on this launch pad, which we, you know, we went for the full Nazi occult uh, thing. So we made this kind of far out uh, launch pad. And then down here I've got, you know, Aktun written there. Um, I've also made a couple of searchlights. These searchlights, I made these, um, let me grab this one here. I'll just put them on, on the board here, both of them. Um, they were pretty easy to make. It was just a wooden block, some extra wheels that I had kicking around, uh, bottle caps, some pins and stuff like that. They move around, they're kind of cool. They cost me all of, you know, probably about you know a nickel, maybe 10 cents to make. Um, so it was either this or order some stuff from the UK and you know, well, you know, <laughs> five cents is five cents. Um, also got this sort of like machine gun pit or a sniper thing that we're gonna do here. Um, these, this, this part here is from the local dollar store. Um, they have the, these, this odd scale, uh, railroad, um, ma, railroading stuff that they have for like little kids. And it's really cheap. And I use a lot of it actually to build industrial stuff. As you can see, I built like a warehouse or like a refueling station thing here too. So I've got two more here on top of each other with a, um, with some sandbags on top, uh, with the kitten craft rod and, and some, uh, oil cans in the back and some boxes and gas cans and stuff like that and then inside we've got it so I can you know, take the roof off we've got a little trailer and stuff like that so we hope that this is going to be a nice uh, table a fun table for the people who come to the tournament to play on just as something new you know um, and uh, hopefully um, you know they'll, they'll kind of remember it and think oh yeah it was cool you know they had that UFO I mean I'm not one of these guys who's into making you know uh, you know, conflict forty-seven sort of themed armies for for uh, for for bolt action. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun to do. I mean, you know, I think it's kind of neat. I think it's kind of new. It's just something that's kind of neat to do for uh, for a table. I've got some more scenery. I'm going to show you. It's it's pretty pedestrian compared to this, but uh, I just want to show it to you and uh, maybe get some feedback. Okay, here is some more dollar store stuff. Um, I uh, like I said, they've got uh, this odd scale uh, model train toy train stuff that they sell there and uh, these things are each about uh, I would assume about 85 cents a piece with the exchange rate and everything so uh, I went out you know I just went over there bought a, three of them and uh, put them on some plastic card as I'll show you on the bottom here just some plastic card mounted them up did the bases yeah just airbrushed them real quick um, they're for an industrial board that we're doing the Russians here are just to, for scale um, but uh, um, yeah, they're they're. I think I think the scale is approximately one seventy second. We we kind of worked that out one time uh, at the club, but uh, I'm gonna do. So, hopefully, I'm gonna do some rust streaking on the roofs and maybe off these little light things here, um, the light outlets. And uh, but yeah, it's just something we're gonna do for like an industrial board. So we're thinking, okay, we're gonna have like three of these. Oh, there's the light. Three three of these things lined up, and then like a big factory in the power plant. My mate's got the power plant going, so. Um, you know, you can put your guys in there, you can put them in uh, vehicles, you know, and maybe a motorbike or a Jeep or something could drive through. But we're thinking on, on, on making sure that these are sort of spaced out wide enough that a tank could, you know, come down through and, and navigate through there. So, uh, yeah, it's just some terrain that I did that I whipped off pretty quick. I'll show you them here. Um, it didn't take me too long to do. Well, it did take me a long time to do because I of other things, but, uh, but uh, the actual man hours, I guess you could say, on these three pieces was, was pretty minimal. Um, just a bit of glue, some primer, some airbrushing, um, and uh, the groundwork and stuff like that. So, yeah, so hopefully our train's going to look pretty good uh, come uh, our October tournament. All right, this is uh, the last bit I'm going to show you guys today. Um, this is Napoleonic stuff that I've done. Um, I've got two more of the chasseurs finished. Um, I kind of went oh, pardon me there guys um with the horses I, I you know went online and actually looked at some pictures of horses and learned a little bit about different colorings on horses so um 
it's been a while since I've painted horses and stuff like that. So I kind of, I, I think one of them's a dun, and I forget what the other one is. But, but anywho, um, yeah, the, the, the cavalry, um, I really like painting these figures. They're probably, I, I enjoy painting the cavalry a lot more than I'm, I'm enjoying painting the French infantry, even though the French infantry, the late French infantry, the Napoleonic infantry is very, very easy to do. Um, and yes, thank you very much for telling me what a saber tash was. Um, I had no idea what it was called. Thank you very, very much. Um, also, I've got some half of the Voltager company and another little company done. Uh, I think there was, those are the orange pom-poms and maybe they're the second company. But yeah, I've noticed that I'm doing a little bit too many um, brown, brownie coats on here, brown uh, great coats. Um, so... Uh, the ones that I'm doing now, I'm planning on doing a lot more gray to sort of even them out. But uh, yeah, the Napoleon, is, like I said is before, has been a breath of fresh air. But I am noticing that um, I'm more into painting the World War II stuff. Um, I'm having a good time with the Napoleonic stuff, but I, you know, World War II is is for me as a painter, as a war gamer, is kind of my my real bread and butter now. Um, anywho, uh, thanks guys for watching. This might have been a, end up being a bit of a long one. So, uh, yeah, take care guys. Keep putting those videos up and uh, keep painting and uh, we'll talk to you later. Take care. Whoa. Bye.